Yeah, lots of love, David. They can play out. But it's cold. It's fresh air. Come on. Your work won't do itself. Morning, Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. Too early to talk about rat poison? Never too early for rat poison. Good morning, Mrs. Lytton. Can I have the rats and mice quarterlies, please? Not a very nice subject to start the day with, is it? Vermin? Yes, but these are the 1916 ones. I need the current ones. Look, they're underneath. I think you should talk to this gentleman. Who is it? Uh, Mr. Stanford, Queen Street Mill. That is for you. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Any more news on Mr. Lytton? Oh, just one or two days. The Italian's on its way home, so they say. That's good, isn't it? We can all get back to normal. Uh, that's the one, I think. OK, uh, Mrs. Lytton, forget the rodents. I need the recent bronchopneumonic figures, specifically influenza. There's a child dead at the Queen Street Mill. Flu? We're done with that, haven't we? Get it in August. Uh, Mrs. Little, leave these. I would like you to come with me. I may need some help. Yes. Yes, I've been in this job for 30 years, and let me tell you, don't, it does come back. Cheerio. They would normally be in school. We have a little schoolroom for them, but the teacher's sick. The teacher's sick? Since when? Since today. Now, how was the teacher yesterday? How should I know? I need you to find out, Mr. Stanford. Yes, indeed, I need you to find out a number of things. Let's start with the lavatories. The lavatories? Mr. Stanford, for this entire floor. They can't bring their own. And how many do it? How many is that one towel supposed to go around? Now, you must have read my most recent pamphlet, otherwise you wouldn't have known who to telephone. Did you read the bit Sir? about common towels spreading infection? 
I'm running a business in difficult times, Dr. Nevin. Along much more charitable lines than a lot of other men, it's as much as I can do to keep the loons going. I've no men. I've had no men for four years. This is the lady. What's her name? What's your name? This is Holston. What's your daughter's name, Mrs. Holston? Ellen. Mrs. Holston, I have to ask you one or two questions so that other mothers don't go through this. How long was Ellen ill? Came on this morning. Right as rain yesterday night. Have you had other visitors in the house? Uncle Frank came back from France last night. And how's that Uncle Frank? I don't know. This is close tonight. I have to ask you if if I can take Ellen's body away with me. What? You have to identify what caused this. It will be a great benefit. Benefit? <laughs> to who? Not to her. No, love. But it might stop it happening to the other kiddies. I'm not going to cut her up. <laughs> Mr. Stanford! You, you wouldn't do it if it wasn't going to help. Have you got beds? Yeah, yes, I've, I've got a lad. And you'd have him cut up, would you? I'll not have her taken. I have a husband who I've never buried, who's lying in pieces somewhere with no grave. I'll not have her taken. Now then, Mrs. Alston, if the doctor says he wants to take the child, then surely he's got good reason, hasn't he? So shall we stop being sentimental? You've still got other kiddies to feed. Don't you touch her. This may signify the start of a new outbreak. I want an ambulance service specifically for any child taken with flu at school to get them home and quarantine. So who's supposed to look after them? The parents, health visitors. There should be a quarantine room in every home. Bit of a luxury. Most homes only have two rooms. Well, then they can divide a room with a cut, and all the information is in my last leaflet. I'm on 150,000 more of it. I want all public assemblies curtailed. I want the Sunday school shut down. I want the tram stop, and I want the mills closed. You do aim high, don't you, Doc? The girl's ears have turned blue. Heliotrope cyanosis. It's what happens at the last stages before death. But you don't have any post-mortem evidence. Not as yet. What are the figures? Uh, we only have confirmed figures from two weeks ago. What are they? Nine deaths from influenza, nine from pneumonia, six from bronchopneumonia, nine from bronchitis. In a population of one million, including Salford, which I suppose we must. The Evening News says that this winter, Manchester won't be infected. I didn't realize that a qualification for writing for the evening news was a degree in medical science. We did have a very expensive false alarm in the summer. Dr. Niven, I closed things down for you. There was hardly an outbreak at all. 20% of the people got it. Uh, the fatality rates were low. You're twitchy. Yes, I'm cautious. It comes back. Well, why don't you get me the current figures? I'll see what I can do. Well, that takes time. Uh, but, but surely, li like the doctor says, prevention's better than cure. Yes, we need to do something now. It's not my job to close things down, James. It's my job to keep things running. And since we're about to come out of this war, I rather fear that my chief health priority is going to be VD. Sorry. You'll be wanting some leave, I expect, for when Mr. Lytton comes home. Three days enough. Are you sure? What, 
Oh, thank you, Doctor. That, that's more than enough. Well, only I wonder if you would wait a little later this evening. Oh, I see. Yes, well, it's just that Dunks is doing door-to-door -door around the hospital for figures. I, I want some frequency curves by tomorrow morning. I need something to persuade Mr. O'Donnell. This is really serious, isn't it? Oh, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're, you're fairly fit. You had it in August. It's the vulnerable who'll suffer. When the Russian flu broke out long before you were born, Mrs. Lytton, I, I was just a young doctor, just down from Scotland. And we'd, we did what we could, but we knew very little. An awful lot of children died. But, uh, of course, that, that was then. Right, what time is it? A little after six. That's when I'm going to catch the last London train. What? Go back as soon as possible. I want to ask an old friend about something. Oh, and, uh, chin up, Mrs. Lytton. We're going to nip this thing in the bud. With you? Mrs. Flynn says you're John's lot are back. They've stopped at Salford. Salford? Oh, Mum. Well, if he could be walking back from there. When did she say that? This afternoon. Her lad sent her a letter. They're keeping them in Salford a few more days. Oh, why? She didn't say. You know how the army is. Well, why didn't he send me a letter? Oh, and why on earth are they keeping them? God, the war's over, isn't it? It's only paperwork or summoned. You've hardly had him here the last four years, love. Your John will be late to his own funeral. Oh, will you stop saying that, Mum? almost completely unpredictable, and it is very hard to prepare for something one cannot predict. This is the second wave of it, Sir Arthur. One can always predict that there will be a second wave. But the chances of coordinating a nationwide or even metropolis-wide strategy to any kind of influenza are so slim they're impossible. London is infected, as are Liverpool and Glasgow. They are the first ports of call. We have neither the resources nor the personnel to contain this. With regret, we must just allow it to take its course. Manchester has hardly been touched yet, Sir Arthur, and that is why I am here. You have people working on a vaccine, don't you? I beg your pardon? I understand that you have people working on a vaccine. I don't know why you would understand that. It'll be some weeks before the trials are undertaken. 
by that time, this outbreak will have passed over. We can run trials in Manchester now, Sir Arthur. We can preempt this. We can stop it before it starts. James, you're right. This is a little more severe than the normal yearly flu, but it will run itself out. And it's nothing compared to what we in public health have been through in this war. I suggest sticking to the sanitary measures outlined in my latest memorandum. Stop men spitting in the streets, ventilate the assembly rooms, and do what you can in general to keep people away from one another. Never mind the vaccine. That'll be the armistice. Well, James, there we are. How are we supposed to keep people away from one another now? Waiting room. Don't touch the skin, Mr. Tudyk. Careful. Just the tuning, not the skin. Right, we have to clear this waiting room, please. please. Everybody else. Okay. We need to isolate them. Ambulance. There's as many coming as can. They're sick getting off all the trains. We have to stop the spreading. We have to seal off the station. We can't enforce it. So I'm the only one here. Everyone else is on the armistice party. What armistice party? Albert Square. Dear God. Come on, so leave it. Go. Mr. O'Donnell. James, you remember my wife? How do you do? Can, 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 can you please send these people home? Why? There is a lot of infection coming home with the boys. The people should not gather. Oh, this is an old woman, James. What do you want them to remember in 20 years' time? The fact they had an almighty party to celebrate the end of the worst 34 years of their lives and the fact that our municipality sent them all home. They might get a nasty cold. I've just seen a young man popping his lungs up at Oxford Road. This is no cold. Good afternoon, Doctor. How is London? It, it was full. Now, did you get over to the hospital? Did you get the latest figures? Oh, it's not much chance of getting anything in the day apart from Rednom. Sorry, flat feet. Very good for getting you out there. They're not so good for dancing. Oh, well, I need these figures for us tomorrow. All right. I wish we just close this down.
dear God. Heliotrope cyanosis, purplish tinge to the mouth, named after a flower. My mother has purple hydrangeas in her garden. I can't look at them now. She's been completely starved of oxygen. Yeah. And we should expect to see the usual Pfeiffer bacillus influenzae and... Oh, God, smells like gangrene. Yeah. His lungs should be white. Well, look, they're full. He's drowned in. That's the worst I've ever seen. Not even the Russian flu could manage that. Yeah. How old was he? 21. Just had a birthday, according to his papers. Strong as a cart horse on his demon report. And dead within 24 hours. Who knows what happened to him in France? Gas. No, no, I saw this boy off the London train. He hadn't suffered gas. This is something entirely new. I'm sorry, I don't know anymore. Oh,